Leia here from LeiaFirstSci.com and in this video I will show you an E2 reaction that results in an anti zaitsev or less substituted product due to the reaction that comes from using a big bulky base. You can catch my entire series on substitution and elimination by visiting my website LeiaFirstSci.com slash substitution dash elimination. A triple B stands for big bulky base which refers to a basic molecule that is so bulky it tends to get in its own way. To help you relate this to the real world, imagine walking outside in the rain carrying a giant umbrella. Now imagine trying to get through a door with that large umbrella, and even though you may want to go through the door, that umbrella being so large, its bulk will prevent you from getting through the door because it's so big. Tert-butyl oxide is one of the most common big bulky bases that you'll see in organic chemistry. Tert-butyl oxide, or tert-butoxide, can be represented in many different ways, so be sure to recognize it no matter how it shows up. Let's draw it first, and then I'll show you a few ways that this might arise. We have a carbon bound to three methyl groups. The carbon is also bound to an oxygen with three lone electron pairs and a negative charge. A negative oxygen, when bound to carbon, is considered to be a very strong base. But the fact that it's attached to the tert-butyl group, that's like the giant umbrella preventing you from getting through the door. And this bulk is going to interfere with the potential reactivity of this molecule. You'll also see it written as CH3-3-CO-. This can also be written backwards with a spectator ion such as Na or KOCCH3. And if you want to draw it out in line structure, you can see it as plus sign and X or the way I like to write it, the chicken foot with the oxygen. Let's see how this affects the E2 reaction by analyzing what happens when 2-bromo-2-methylbutane reacts with potassium tert-butoxide in a heated solution of tert-butanol. Let's verify that in fact an E2 reaction can take place by looking at the four-part checklist that I use to analyze all substitution and elimination reactions. To see detailed videos explaining each of these concepts, visit my website layofirstside.com slash substitution dash elimination. First thing we look at is the alkyl chain, specifically the carbon holding the leaving group. In this case, we have a tertiary carbon, which means a one-type reaction can take place, given that it will form a very stable carbocation. We can also have an E2 reaction take place because we're not looking at the alpha carbon, meaning the carbon holding the leaving group. Instead, we're looking at the beta carbons, the carbons directly attached to that alpha carbon. But we do rule out the SN2 reaction because you cannot have a direct nucleophilic substitution on a tertiary carbon because it's too hindered. We'll write no SN2 to show that we've ruled out the bimolecular substitution reaction. Next, we'll look at the attacking nucleophile or base, and we see something that appears to be neutral, but remember, potassium is simply a positive spectator to balance the negative charge on the oxygen. The fact that it's negative means it's too strong and impatient to wait for a carbocation to form, so we rule out the one-type reactions, and this leaves me with an SN2 or an E2 reaction. A negative oxygen makes for a strong nucleophile or base, but when you have a really big bulky base, it tends to be a terrible nucleophile. Think back to what you learned about substitution. The entire nucleophile has to attack and remain attached to the molecule, but because the big bulky base is so bulky, it doesn't want to be attached to the molecule. It's like forcing your way into a room with that giant umbrella. And so a big bulky base is not going to undergo a substitution reaction, instead we're looking for elimination reactions. Having ruled out a one-type reaction and having ruled out substitution, we're left with just a possibility for an E2 reaction. But in case you're not too comfortable with it, let's continue. Looking at the tert-butanol solvent, we see that it's polar protic, and we know that if a two-type reaction does take place, Elimination is favored over substitution. We have heat, which again with a two-type reaction tends to stabilize the E2 reaction more than the SN2. For a big bulk base, you often see the heat not so much to determine that it's E2, but rather to help stabilize the potentially unstable intermediates of this reaction. Last, we check the leaving group and verify that bromine is a good leaving group and so any type of reaction can take place. Putting all these clues together, we see that this reaction will take place through the bimolecular elimination mechanism. Before working through the mechanism, let's take a look at the potential products. 
In an elimination reaction, you want to take a look at your alpha carbon, meaning the carbon holding the leaving group, and also the beta carbons, or specifically the beta hydrogens, to see their degree of substitution. We have two beta carbons as methyl groups, so we'll change their color. A methyl group is a primary carbon. This gives me two sets of three primary hydrogens, which will show in green. We also have that red secondary beta carbon, giving me two red secondary beta hydrogens. Since the two green beta carbons are equivalent, we can potentially have up to two products for this reaction. If we eliminate towards the red carbon, we get a tri-substituted pi bond, and if we eliminate towards one of the green carbons, we get a di-substituted pi bond. According to Zaitsev's rule, you want to form the pi bond that is more substituted because it's more stable, and so ideally we want to form the tri-substituted molecule. But the problem is, the big bulky base is so large that even though it wants to eliminate one of the red hydrogens, it tends to get in its own way and the bulk won't let it get so close to the molecule. So the big bulky base is going to resort to picking a hydrogen off the end of the least substituted carbon in order to form the less stable product. Now if you're thinking why are we forming the less stable product, don't think of it as a choice between more and less stable. Think of it as a choice between forming the less stable product or forming nothing at all. So we're choosing the lesser of the two evils. Another thing you want to keep in mind, we're not going to have 100% of the dye substituted product forming. Instead, we're going to have a mix of the two, but the dye substituted is going to be the major product the tri-substituted is going to be the minor product. And that's because the red beta carbon isn't as hindered. As you increase the hindrance on a molecule, you're going to have a much greater ratio between your major and minor products. But on your exam, just write all the possibilities and put major over the less substituted product and minor over the more substituted. Let's take a look at the mechanism for this reaction. The reaction starts out when one of the lone pairs on the negative oxygen reaches for and grabs the terminal beta hydrogen. The oxygen is only grabbing the nucleus or the center of that hydrogen, but not the bonding electrons. And so those electrons will collapse towards the alpha carbon, kicking the bromine out in that same step. Recall that E2 is a bimolecular reaction where both molecules react at the same time. So we have three arrows, but only one step. This gives me the anti zaitsev or less substituted pi bond for our final product. You can catch the entire substitution and elimination series on my website, layerforsci.com slash substitution dash elimination. I work through many more substitution and elimination reactions on my membership site, ranging from simple to tricky. You can find information on how to join by visiting studyhall.layerforsci.com forward slash join. Again, that's studyhall.layerforsci.com slash join. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit orgosecrets.com. That's O R G O Secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit slash orgo tutor. That's O R G O Tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.